Story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a romance, comedy, and fantasy film called Date with an Angel. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During their engagement party, spoiled rich girl Patty Winston looks for her fiancé, Jim. She then finds her father, Ed, who happens to be Jim's boss at a cosmetics firm. Ed is proud to show Jim's father, Ben, and stepmother, Grace, that his daughter is the face of their new cosmetic line. But he also feels a bit sad that she's getting married soon. Then, Patty excuses herself to look for Jim, ignoring one of her father's employees, Aldridge. Moments later, Patty finally finds Jim Sanders outside. Jim gets the attention of the guests by fooling around, and he eventually slips before he enters the house. So, Patty asks Jim if he's okay, and if he still has a headache before going inside with him. Unfortunately, they don't notice the three armed and masked men arriving at the party. It isn't long before the men break into the house and take Jim hostage, leaving everyone frightened. Then, one of the intruders throws a grenade before fleeing with his accomplices, sending the guests running outside. However, the grenade doesn't explode and Ed returns inside to answer the phone. Unfortunately, Ed learns from one of the masked men that the grenade is just a toy. Meanwhile, the armed guys are revealed to be Jim's friends, George, Don, and Rex. The men laugh as they take Jim to his bachelor's party at his place, where they all drink all night. Then, Jim wakes up when something lands in his pool, causing a flood inside his house. So, Jim goes outside to investigate, and that's when he sees an angel with a broken wing floating in the water. Bewildered, Jim takes the angel inside and fetches a blanket for her, but she's already dry when he returns. Jim also attempts to wake her up, but when she doesn't move, he decides to call 911. However, Jim finds the phone inside the aquarium, so he just gives the angel mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Soon, the angel regains consciousness, but she doesn't seem to speak. She then realizes her wing is broken, so Jim tries to comfort her. However, Jim stops her from kissing him because he's engaged, but he eventually gives in and savors the feeling of her lips against his. Then, Jim falls asleep, leaving the angel confused. The next day, Patty arrives at Jim's house, disappointed about what happened the previous night. She also tells Jim to apologize to her father before trying to get inside, but her fiancé stops her and says the place is messy. So, Patty eventually goes home and Jim starts cleaning his house. However, he soon finds the angel in his room, leaving him in awe. At the same time, Jim's friends show up outside, so he instructs the angel to hide before closing his room. Jim then tries to send his buddies away, but they get suspicious and suddenly go inside the house. They also search Jim's room, thinking he's hiding something, and they eventually find the angel under the blanket. Jim tells his friend the woman is an angel, and the guys can't believe their eyes. Moments later, Jim's friends take him to a convenience store to eat. His buddies plan to use the angel to earn some cash, but Jim firmly tells them they're not going to turn her into a sideshow freak. Jim is disappointed at his friends for even thinking that, so he tells George he'll deal with the angel without their help and leaves. Once he's back home, Jim covers the angel's broken wing with a bandage to make it heal faster and puts a blanket around her. She then tries kissing him again, and as Jim stops her, he remembers he's supposed to call Patty's father. But since his phone is broken, Jim decides just to visit Ed and takes his medicine for his headache. Unfortunately, Jim finds Patty waiting for him outside, and she immediately thinks her fiancé is cheating on her when she sees the angel. Still, Jim tries to explain himself, but Patty refuses to listen and quickly leaves. After that, Jim takes the angel to church and talks to the priest, who thinks he's there to confess. Jim says he found an angel and asks the priest what to do, but the priest just tells him to pray. Meanwhile, a woman screams when she sees the angel near the statue of Jesus, causing the angel to shriek too. The woman then runs away just as Jim comes out of the confessional booth, and he immediately covers the angel with a blanket. Unfortunately, the priest doesn't want to help Jim with the angel and even refuses to look at her because he thinks they're doing a prank, threatening to call the cops if they don't leave. That night, Patty goes to Jim's parents' house and tells them what happened. Grace assures Patty that everything will be okay, and it's obvious that she's scared that Ed will break off Jim and Patty's engagement. Unfortunately, they're unaware that Ed is already waiting for Jim outside his place. On the other hand, Jim teaches the angel to eat a burger, but she only gets scared and starts squealing, getting the attention of the people around them. So, Jim comforts the angel and leaves the car before he loses control and kisses her, suddenly remembering Patty. Then, while Jim is gone, the angel finally starts eating some fries. 
At the same time, Jim's friends find the angel and entice her with fries to make her come with them. Unfortunately, Jim is too busy talking to Grace about Patty, and his stepmother eventually lets him speak with his fiance. However, Patty is too mad at Jim and just shouts at him, telling him to drop dead. Then, Jim finally notices that his friends are trying to take away the angel and stops them, but the guys make it clear they're not giving up. After that, Jim finally goes home with the angel. They then quickly head to the house when a dog, Brutus, starts chasing them. But the animal soon stops upon looking the angel in the eyes. Unexpectedly, Brutus takes a liking to the angel, but as Jim tries to understand what just happened, Ed suddenly shows up. So, Jim apologizes for his mistakes, but Ed isn't in the mood to listen to him. Luckily, the angel's presence calms Ed down, and he suddenly tells Jim he'll explain everything to Patty once he sees her. He also reminds Jim to take care of the angel and leads them inside the house, but as soon as the door closes, Ed comes to his senses. However, he fails to confront Jim again because Brutus starts chasing and biting him, leaving him with no choice but to run away. Concurrently, Jim starts working on his song, but he just ends up throwing the paper away. He also tries taking his medicine for his headache, but the angel startles him when she enters the room. Jim then tells her he's getting married to Patty, which is why he has to figure out where the angel belongs and take her there. Unfortunately, that makes the angel sad, causing her to leave Jim alone. The next day, Ed discusses with the board the reason why their sales are dropping. Sadly, it started when Patty became the face of their cosmetic line, but Ed doesn't want to admit that. However, he still mentions seeing a beautiful girl who can replace Patty, and he tells everyone she's his daughter's fiancé's mistress. Unfortunately, Patty can't accept that Ed is replacing her and tells her father she hates him. Meanwhile, Jim buys new clothes for the angel and makes sure to cover her wings. He brings her to a library to read a book about angels, causing her to be excited. So, Jim ends up taking her out of the library to avoid getting too much attention. On the other hand, Jim's friends consult a lawyer to discuss what they'll do with the angel. Moments later, Jim takes the angel with him to talk to Patty. However, Patty refuses to listen and just throws everything he gave her out the window. Jim then tries removing the angel's coat to show Patty her wings, but the angel decides to play when the sprinklers suddenly turn on. Despite that, Jim still tries to explain himself, but Patty is having none of it and just chooses to drink gin. Jim then calls Patty later that day, but she still refuses to speak with him. After that, Jim tries to stop the angel from taking animals home, but the cats and dogs really love her. The next day, George calls several TV and radio stations, intending to show them the angel in a press conference. However, since they don't have the angel, Jim's friends plan to use Patty to get her. They then arrange to have some flowers and balloons delivered to Patty, alongside a fake letter from Jim, asking her to meet her at the park. On the other hand, George invites Jim to the park, apologizing for everything and saying they want to help him. After talking to George, Jim realizes that the angel is gone. He isn't sure whether she left or if she's been taken, but it isn't long before he sees a glowing light outside and follows it. Then, Jim finds the angel in the woods, finally able to move her broken wing. So, Jim apologizes to the angel for disturbing her, also informing her they're meeting his friends. Meanwhile, Patty patiently waits for Jim at the park. However, her mood instantly changes when she sees him with the angel, and Jim's friends eagerly watch from afar as they argue. They plan to take the angel as soon as Jim gets distracted, and sure enough, the guys run after an angry Patty. Once the angel is alone, Jim's buddies capture her with a net and take her to the car. On the other hand, Jim tries to explain himself to Patty, but quickly leaves her when he sees what's happening to the angel. Unfortunately, Jim fails to stop his friends from taking the heavenly creature. Moments later, Jim goes to George's apartment and doesn't find his friends there. He then drives around the neighborhood to search for the angel, unaware that she's been taken to a motel. Jim's buddies try to keep her quiet with toys and some french fries, but the angel doesn't hesitate to make a noise whenever they remove the cover from her mouth. At the same time, Ed drops by Jim's house to see the angel, only to find several dogs guarding the place. The next day, the reporters gather at the Red Ford Press Club. Jim's friends are backstage, waiting for the conference to start, and the angel tries to influence Don to release her. So, George quickly blindfolds the angel when he realizes what's happening, reminding Don to watch out for that stare. On the other hand, Jim receives a call about the press club after falling asleep at George's place. Then, he immediately heads there, not knowing that the press conference has already started. George faces the reporters and talks about the greatest find of the century, and it isn't long before he presents the angel to them. However, the reporters don't believe the woman is an actual angel because she's in disguise. 
So George tries to show them the angel's wings, but Jim shows up and tells everyone the angels are fake before getting into a fight with his friends. Meanwhile, the reporters simply take a video and pictures of them, but they all get distracted when the angel punches George. Jim then quickly takes the angel out of there, but a reporter follows him to his car to get a statement. Unfortunately, Patty sees Jim's interview on television, wherein he tells the reporter the angel is his. Later on, Ed confronts Jim's friends to know where the angel is, but they have no idea where Jim took her. Because of that, Ed tries to intimidate them by saying the cops are after Jim, and he could have them jailed for the stunt they pulled at his house, but the trio don't take him seriously. Unfortunately, Ed is a man of his word and quickly sends them to jail. On the other hand, Jim takes the angel to his old tree house in the woods. Jim only hopes that nobody will find the angel there, unaware that the cops are already looking for him. At the same time, Ed talks to Ben to see if he knows where Jim is, but the man has no idea where his son went. As if Ed doesn't have enough problems, he struggles to control Patty because of what Jim did to her, and she plans to teach the angel a lesson. Later that day, Jim takes aspirin for his headache before reading a book about angels and devils. He then notices the angel playing with some animals and happily watches her from afar. At the same time, Jim sees the angel bathe in the spring, and he can't help but admire her beauty. After a while, the angel finally decides to fly after realizing her broken wing has completely healed. She then returns to the heavens, but she soon comes back to the treehouse. The angel also wraps a bandage around her wing again because she doesn't want Jim to know that she can already fly. That night, Jim shares with the angel how his father got him into music. He also reveals he wanted to be a composer, but he struggled to compose anything good. Still, he continued composing, but he eventually stopped when his headaches got worse and went back to fooling around with his friends. Then, he met Patty, and Jim thought that getting married and having a stable job would straighten things out in his head. But of course, everything changed when he found the angel, and now Jim is so confused. Frustrated, Jim yells at the angel for always looking at him as if she likes him, causing her to be sad. So, Jim quickly apologizes, telling the angel they can't have a life together because she doesn't belong there. Unfortunately, Jim is unaware that the cops have already found this car. Despite feeling conflicted, Jim still entertains the angel by making her listen to one of his compositions. Then, the angel slowly approaches Jim and dances with him, and Jim wishes she'd tell him how she feels. Meanwhile, a miserable Patty becomes excited upon getting a call from the cops and learning where Jim is. She then gets dressed and takes her father's shotgun, ready to get back at the angel. However, she falls down the stairs because the gun is too heavy, but that doesn't stop her from getting up and preparing to leave. On the other hand, Ben bails Jim's friends out of jail and takes them with him as he heads to the treehouse. Unfortunately, they don't know that Grace and Ed are following them. In the treehouse, Jim finally realizes the angel's broken wing is healed and says her powers should now be restored. Of course, they both feel sad because they have to part ways, but Jim has no other choice but to take the angel to the meadow so she can leave. Moments later, Ben and Jim's friends arrive at the treehouse, and it isn't long before Patty gets there too. After a few minutes, Jim urges the angel to fly, but she vanishes instead when she hears the sound. Then, Patty finally finds Jim and demands to see the angel, but Jim says she's already gone. Pissed, Patty slaps Jim and tries to hit him for the second time, but the invisible angel stops her from doing that. The angel repeatedly hits an angry Patty, and as Jim looks for her, his head suddenly hurts. To make things worse, Ed and Grace show up, but Ed is more concerned about finding the angel for his company. Luckily, Ben and Jim's friends arrive to help Jim, but everything descends into chaos when Ed attacks his daughter's fiancé. Unfortunately, Jim loses consciousness, and that's when the angel shows herself to them. Enraged, the angel sends Ed and Patty away using heavy rain before returning to the heavens. Meanwhile, Jim is quickly taken to the hospital where his friends and family learn that he has a cerebral tumor. However, the angel comes back for Jim, making him realize he's going to die and that she's supposed to take him after his bachelor's party. Jim regrets not having enough time with the angel and confesses that he loves her, and the angel can only cry as she kisses him. Then, the angel cradles Jim in her arms and covers him with her wings, showing that she loves him too. Later on, Jim's friends visit him and thinks he's already dead, but the angel, who's now a human and a nurse, tells them Jim needs his rest. She also says Jim will be around for quite a while, adding that she has that on the highest authority. Realizing the nurse is the angel, Jim's friends happily leave to give them some privacy. Then, Jim finally wakes up completely healed and sees the angel is now immortal, who says she got a leave of absence for good behavior. At the same time, Jim can't help but smile and kiss the angel when she asks for some french fries. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.